In this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at Burp Suite's sequencer feature. The sequencer feature is actually one that allows us to determine whether variables that are provided by the server are actually truly random or whether there is some predictability to them. And the reason for doing this is in the case of session variables, for example. If I can predict a session variable, I may actually be able to gain some authentication or some authorization to the system rather than actually having to really authenticate myself against the system. Now, what I've been doing here is just clicking through the pages, making sure that I've got some pages up in Burp Suite that's actually running in the background over here. I've got my target and I can open that up. And now let's take a look actually at the response, and we're looking for something that we may be able to see if we could predict. Now, normally I'd be looking for a session ID or something like that, and I'm not actually seeing one of those, but I did see something back here that we could actually use, and we could certainly demonstrate the sequencer feature with that. I've got guessnum.html, and the header field that I'm going to send to the sequencer is this one here, the E tag. I'm going to right click on that and say send to sequencer. And you can see the sequencer tab over here has lit up indicating it has the page. And now see it couldn't find a cookie or a form field to actually sequence. It's asking me for a custom location. Now I could just say start live capture here, which is how we would start the sequencer off but we haven't actually identified anything that we are going to run the sequencer against. In this case, I'm going to go to configure and I'm going to select this one here. And it populates these settings up here. So it's going to be looking after the expression E tag, and then it's going to stop at very. Now I can click okay. Now we have the location that we're going to be running the sequencer on and now I can click Start Live Capture. We're sending a lot of requests and checking the information that we get back from the server. If I select Auto Analyze, it will automatically populate the pages for me here, and you can see the overall quality of randomness within the sample is estimated to be extremely poor. It looks like that's something that we could guess pretty easily, and I could go over to Character Level Analysis, and take a look at that. I could look at bit level analysis, and then I could check the analysis options as well. And of course, every time it does the auto analyze, every 2000 requests by the look of it, since it seems to be incrementing this next field by 2000 every time it does an auto analyze. When it does an auto analyze, it pops me back to the summary page. We are now at 20,000 requests that have been analyzed and we're still at extremely poor. Pretty good chance that we've actually got a header variable that is pretty easy to predict because the randomness of the sample is actually extremely poor as we see here. The sequencer, as you can see, is pretty useful. Now it doesn't tell you necessarily how to go about predicting it, although you could use the analysis and make some conclusions as to how it might actually work. But the sequencer is really good at doing the analysis for you and sending off thousands of requests so that you can determine whether the session ID, for example, or the cookie or whatever it is you're looking for really is truly random or whether it can be predicted. And if it can be predicted, of course, then you may be able to manipulate it in a way that you could gain access or get some data from the server that you wouldn't otherwise be able to get. So the sequencer feature is really helpful in doing some analysis of the cryptographic functions or the randomness functions that a server may be using.